Hey, Vanjie. How's it going? It's going good. How about you, Truman? I'm good. So, what's the plan today? Well, today we're going to talk about two different important pieces of art. The first one being the Catalan wolf, also known as the she-wolf. Yes, that's a very good choice. The Catalan wolf sculpture is very interesting. You got that right. I have never seen or heard about a female wolf nursing human babies. Yeah, that is a very unusual sight. Wolves are known to be very vicious and not so friendly with humans. So where does the sculpture actually come from? The Capulain Wolf is a bronze sculpture with no known artists, and it has two origins. The first theory is that the Capulain Wolf originated from the early Romans, known as the Etruscans, from approximately 5th century BCE. But according to new findings, the, the actual sculpture may have originated from medieval times. The reason why there are issues with the dates are, first, the wolf and the infants were made at separate periods. You can tell by the style of bronze work, and the two are very different. Number two, the wolf, the wolf sculpture has many possible dates when it was created. The wolf is the much older sculpture, and the two infants were added much later on. That's very interesting. So what would be the story behind the female wolf and the two babies? Well, this sculpture tells us the story of how Rome came to be. According to legend, the two babies are Romulus and Remus. So the story goes that the grandfather of the two twins, Numeter, was overthrown by his brother. He ordered the twins to be cast into the timber, world, the timber river, so abandoned by its people, they were rescued by a she-wolf who cared for them until a shepherd found and raised them. I know this story, and later as adults, they were going to found a city. But f they fought over the location, and as a result, Romulus kills Remus, and he names the city after his own name, Rome. Correct. So you do know your history. So the sculpture today is in Rome, Italy, and it stands 75 centimeters tall and 114 centimeters long. It is a very important symbol for Italians. Let's start talking about the actual sculpture. It is Im it's very interesting to me that the she-wolf stands in a very alert, protective stance, kind of like she's looking out for danger. You can see that she actually cares for these two babies, even though they obviously aren't hers. Yeah, on that note, the babies are babies. They are clueless and oblivious to the outside and very dangerous world. They, they want one thing, and that is the wolf's milk. So I see a lot of symbolism in this particular sculpture. I think the wolf in a way represents a guardian of some sort, um, while the two babies would represent the citizens being nursed by the natural resources. Yes, the wolf in some sort is very iconic. The necklace looking thing around her neck gives us a hint that this is not a regular wolf. You know, the way you think of how it's symbolic is very clever and actually a possible correct way Italians see this word. We actually know it's very iconic because the Capulain Wolf is depicted on a number of Italian stamps. So now let's move on to the next artwork. And for our next piece of art, we have Giovanni Bellini's Ecstasy of St. Francis, also known as St. Francis in the Desert. Bellini began this painting in 1475 and finished it around 1480. It is found today in New York City in the Frick Collection in what was known as Henry Clay Frick's living room. This painting is a snapshot of St. Francis caught in communication with the divine, unlike other paintings that portray a particular narrative story. Bellini paints oil on panel using a technique that uses the transparency of pigments bound in oil. This allows the underlayer to show the thin glazes placed on the top to mute the colors rather than muddying them. Bellini definitely mixes art with spirituality. As you can see in the painting, there are some images of the Passion of Christ, such as the skull, the crown of thorns, the Bible, grapevines, and a donkey. You can also see a sense of spirituality in St. Francis. His posture is in a stance that is like he is caught in a moment with God. In the moment with the divine, St. Francis seems to be given the stigmata, making him the first person to receive Christ's wounds. We see this in his, in his hands, two piercings like the one Jesus received when he was nailed to the cross. Traditionally, this particular moment is depicted with a six-winged seraph, but Bellini focuses more on the naturalism. 
We also see that St. Francis is barefoot with his sandals off to the side, kind of like in reference to Moses at the burning bush, like, like he is honoring sacred ground. St. Francis stares up into the vacant space, basking in the sunlight, which seems to be like he's basking in God's presence as well. Bellini portrays this moment in a God-infused natural world as we can see the beautiful detail done to the nature behind St. Francis. Bellini also incorporates a sense of vastness as well in his painting. Compared to the whole picture, St. Francis is small, but as you focus in, you realize he is in the area of attention. It's interesting because in the background we see different forms of life. Some notice Francis in his moment of praising God, but we also see life continuing. It seems like Bellini portrays how life goes on despite an important experience Francis has. Mm -hmm.